All right, hello to anyone that watches this video or logs on. I'm going to do a really quick card here, and uh, it's a scene that I've done many times in the past on this channel. There's probably, I don't know, a handful of uh, scenes that are um, kind of more northern lights in theme, okay? And I'm going to do a quick version of that um, kind of process or entity here, and it involves a range of tones, okay? And I'm going to be working on a quarter page um, piece of glossy cardstock, okay? Now for these, this type of um, scenario, lighting scenario, I really like to go for something with a lot of um, deep, rich tones. And um, I get quite, you know, asked about this a lot because um, a lot of my early videos are all on uh, glossy cardstock. Um, and I do that for the amount of saturation and uh, richness that you can achieve from that. Hello, Beverly. Uh, good to see you as always. Um, uh, we're going to do a Northern Lights type of scene here. Happy Monday to you too. I thought, eh, let's get on here on a Monday. Sometimes people don't look forward to Mondays, but I don't know. I should do something every Monday. Hello, Jeannie. Good to see you. I'm starting early here. <laughs> Uh, you yeah, know, hopefully I don't put you to sleep this time this early of the day, but, um, easy, uh, scene here, uh, very quick, uh, type of, um, lighting scenario here. Hello, Sheila. Good to see you. Um, but yeah, let's get this done here. Um, it, quick, easy background and a very dynamic one. And a lot of people like, um, the look of this type of scenario here, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. Hello, Beatrice. Good to see you. Hope you've been stamping and enjoying your stamps. Uh, get your son doing those uh, uh, those uh, gal galactic types of uh, scenarios sometime if he hasn't already. Get him on your airbrush and all. And get him using some of that equipment of yours. Hello, Jason. Thanks so much. Just starting a scene out right here. Hello, Sam Hawkins. Good to see you. Um, let's see here. Okay, so uh, if you've just logged on, Northern Light scenario. I've done it uh, on videos before, but I thought we would do it live. I don't. Sometimes uh, doing it live, I don't know. It makes it more kind of real to people, I guess. I don't know. Uh, rather than some kind of taped, uh, you know, entity of the same uh scene i find <laughs> i don't know it makes it real like more real i guess you can interact and whatnot and ask questions and make comments etc um i don't know sometimes people don't i don't know it's like uh you know you tape some uh scenes or something like that and i don't know maybe people think it's like edited or something like that or, or whatnot a at times you know it, it, especially if they haven't done uh, these types of uh, techniques before Lee Tina, good to see you again too. Thanks for joining in here. So we are doing this uh, glossy cardstock, dye-based ink layering scenario here, okay? So um, the important thing is, is to leave light showing, okay? So it's a northern light scenario. I'm not trying to replicate um, a photograph or what northern lights actually look like, okay? Because I'm making a uh, do with uh, kind of the formatting that we're working with here. And I'm also taking into consideration stamps we're going to be using on here. If you're going out and you're a, a nighttime photographer and you're taking, um, I don't know, photographs of the northern lights, you're doing it under... Um, you know, a, a different type of scenario with a given background, okay? So you'd, as a photographer, you'd go around and look for, um, you know, the ideal kind of vantage point to um, take your photographs from. Usually you'd have some trees, uh, you know, in the foreground, or if it's a barren snow terrain, maybe uh, somewhere, um, you'd, be t you'd be working that into the composition, okay? But... I'm going to be using the Lakeside Cove. I've done, I've used this Lakeside Cove in this um, uh, compositional uh, format here a lot. 
and I want this image to show up, okay? So if I make it really dark on the horizon, like, you know, you might see in a Northern Lights type of scenario, we wouldn't be able to see the silhouette of the trees right here because it'd be dark on dark. So I leave areas of light down here. And then maybe this light down here would represent the reflections in the water or something like that. So always, you know, uh, kind of, you know, don't limit yourself to thinking about, um, kind of creating or replicating something that a camera can do much better. You're an artist here and you're setting up your entire scenario. So, um, you know, you can reference, you know, kind of a photographic um, type of look to something like that, but don't limit yourself in terms of the composition. So Beatrice, you've been making Mother's Day cards, but I'm about to start graduation and then Father's Day cards. Yeah. Hey, the Father's Day cards, you can have a fisherman, you know, underneath uh, Northern Lights. <laughs> Maybe that would be his ideal kind of situation. So, um, yeah. Hello, Candy. Hello, Deanna. Good to see you. Uh, check out Deanna's and everyone's stuff. If you see people's names up here, kind of check out their uh, stuff on Facebook and whatnot. Um, always like seeing Deanna's uh, stuff, uh, like with the, uh, the pastels, you know, or Dina all of her stuff, but the pastels. Check out Deanna's uh, church one at midnight uh, with the fences. A lot of you like the fences, but those um, shadows on them were... I don't know. They mesmerized me. So hopefully we can mesmerize with this type of um, northern light scenario here. Everyone likes that kind of deep, rich, glowing kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, appearance of them. What are they? They're glowing gases, right, from um, solar flares, right, or something like that, I think, that are entering the atmosphere and... Uh, Something like, I don't know, I forgot the uh, the exact uh, scenario of those. Oh, I'm, I'm just using a kitchen sponge here. I don't know, I thought I would use those today just, you know, to show you, you know, what you can do. I've been using paper towels a lot uh, lately. These are just, I don't know, I cut up a pack of, I don't even know where my sponges are. I have a pack of them somewhere. Uh, I don't know, not important, but I just cut it up into three like that. I should keep one for kind of some greens and one for reds and purples. I don't know, something like that. Then I don't have to clean them off every time. Um, but yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, now I'm going to get really dark with this, okay? And you might not be able to see a lot of this green here, but these lighter tones here um, used on the foundation, those ones are really going to be the ones kind of setting the tone, okay, for the amount of vibrancy and richness that you'll end up seeing in the end result, okay? So a lot, a lot of times, like if people haven't seen this process before, um, a lot of times like in a scenario like this that's going to be really dark, they might see it as like a very limited usage of like this green here. So they might think it's just like only in here as opposed to underneath all the other tones layered on top of it. And it's understandable, you know, it's the, a lot, you know, a lot of people in different types of techniques just don't use this amount of ink in this kind of layered glazing type of look here. So, um, but it is the thing that really ends up adding so much depth and richness to the end result. And, uh, you know, like people have asked me, do you, you know, do you have to use glossy cardstock, you know, and what they're talking about usually when they're asking that is with Stampscape stamps and that's not the case. But what I always say is you use the surface and media combinations that's going to suit your you know, your end result, uh, whatever, en desired end result look. So naturally you wouldn't use um, glossy card stock or something like non-porous, like a foil for something like, um, like pastels, right? You need something with more tooth to it. So you want a pastel look to it. Um, you use, you know, a matte card stock or something a lot more conducive to that. So, 
Anyways, do you see that kind of glow even starting to work right now? I, what is it? Is that the second color that I've used or the, or did I use, did I use three? I don't remember. Okay, I'm gonna mix this brown into it. I don't know if I've done this brown in previous scenarios here. So, uh, peeled paint, Rose. Uh, I don't know. I just threw that into the mix. I think that's the only green I have with the distress here. So, I don't know. It makes it good. Uh, the distress inks, the mementos, um, they're thicker inks in general. So they're a little bit, um, oh, they're easier to probably blend in for people and, and me too, um, especially when it's your first color, okay? So the thicker the viscosity, which is basically every dye-based ink out there, except for Marvy, okay? Um, they really blend nice and easy on glossy cardstock. Okay, so speaking of that, um, let me let me use this uh, mustard and see if that does anything here. I think it does. Do you see that difference right there than down here? I don't know. It it it's light, but it's very subtle. See that right there? That's that mustard. So you see what I mean? If you add these um, different types of colors into there. In, in, especially in this type of scenario where you'll really be able to see a lot of that layering um, in the end result, because I'm not going to fill in a bunch of images in here, um, covering up a lot of this uh, color application work right here. So, you know, all of these kind of little subtle differences like that can make a really big difference. Okay, so just uh, a little bit of um, color theory, not to get all technical or, I don't know, I don't think it's technical here, but if you look at a color wheel, uh, I don't have one right next to my desk here, I have some somewhere, but the color wheel, um, analogous colors are colors right next to each other on the color wheel, so you have, you know, yellow, yellow, green, green, what is it, green goes into the blue tones, you know, like a you know, like an aqua or some like, you know what I mean? Warm tone blues to the blue to purple and all that. Okay, so anyways, if you use analogous colors next to each other, um, it creates a color glow. So we're doing kind of doing an extreme version of that, okay? So layering all this different range of colors like that, it's not even, I'm talking about they glow. It creates a color glow when you put them right next to each other so that intersection of them or that median of them creates this color glow. And what we're doing is we're really layering these one over the top of one another. It's like glazing a turkey, right? You know, almost you keep glazing a turkey and the more glazes you put over it because it's transparent, the richer that end result can look. All right, so um, glazing this card like that, that's what I mean when I say glazing. It's putting all these transparent tones over one another. And, I mean, you can get this end result, um, you know, some form of it in three tones. But if you have those intermediate colors, and if it's of the same type of um, color scheme, greens or whatever, you have different brands, you might, you know, you might want to throw them in there and just to see what they would look like, okay? And you just kind of line things up going from light to dark, you know, here's the yellow like that. But you see, I, I, I use that yellow after I got, you know, to one of these darker tones, okay. So you can add in, add them in wherever you want. I just kind of do it in order. If I use that yellow first, then I wouldn't have had to use this other part of the sponge. I could have just done it on this side. So anyways, that yellow is mixing. You can see where it picked up a bunch of the green. Okay, so just for kicks, I'm going to add in some of this brown. I'm just going to use that same side of the sponge right here. Sometimes I find that um, adding this brown into things like grass textures and whatnot, I mention this all the time um, in my videos, but adding that kind of brownish tone in there, it kind of mellows things out and makes it a little bit more earthy when it comes to grass. But I think it also kind of makes this, I don't know, certain types of color schemes um, a little bit more rich instead of so kind of, I don't know, monotone or something like that. Or it is a monotone, but it's a very rich one in terms of 
kind of stretching out into, I guess, different areas of the color wheel. I never really thought about it. I don't analyze things like that, but I'm just trying to explain kind of what's happening kind of after the fact. All right. I don't think about color theory when I'm doing um, scenes, okay? I'm just kind of optically trying to blend them together. But you see what that looks like now? It's a little bit different, right? And it's not going to be, I'm not going for a brown look to this, although you could. Um, I'm just going, I'm just trying to create a rich palette. Okay, so browns, I like it in my purple kind of violet tone scenes, certainly for um, uh, sunset types of scenarios. Like that, okay. And now as I do this too, um, what I want to do is I want to retain that area of light within there, you know, don't get too close to it, you know, with the super dark tones if you're going into those really dark tones. I mean, you can stop right here if you wanted to, or you could have stopped like at the second color if you wanted to, but let's go all the way here. But see this, it, you see how damp it's getting? You can do something like this if you want to. I mean, that's a horrible type of application, but you see how it really kind of just blends out like that. So again, that's one of the other benefits of using those sub layers of tones is because when you get to these darker ones, uh, one of the things that's, you know, maybe not great is that it's, you know, kind of slower to apply, but it's just so much easier to apply though and forgiving, okay? You're not gonna get this kind of harsh mark like that that can't be blended out, right? So you're dealing with kind of a more moist surface like that. So you do something like that and you can really blend it out, okay? So retain your lights, but maybe if you do want that aired in there to get a little bit more green, see I'm coming into it with like a really light version of that green. It's like a dry brush, okay? And this is where you can really start developing some of those different real flame-like textures in here too, because it gets kind of that that edgy look like that. And see how that's looking right in there? See how I'm always kind of dragging in that same kind of motion with my hand like this too? It's just very ergonomic. I just switch my card around into the direction or angle, I guess, angle and direction, that the stroke is going to be the most conducive to a very natural application. So it's just going like this kind of with my finger like that. If it doesn't get any darker and you want it to get darker, and we do want it to get darker on this one, you have to kind of dab it in like that because when we're doing this, we're kind of wiping that moist surface and we're wiping moist ink off from uh, the surface there. So you have to kind of build it up a little bit like so. It kind of starts to set up a little bit and then you can just drag it out like that. Okay, see that right there? Candy uses a, uh, a chunk in dish to clean my stamps. Got it. I was always using kind of our sponges that we were getting ready to throw away. But I thought, why don't I just buy a bag of these things, you know? And just use it specifically for, I was usually, you know, we usually use those scouring sponges here in the house, you know, so I would use the real kind of thrashed side. I'm looking around if I have any of this left here. Oh yeah. It's like this sponge. This is what typically what my sponges look like that I was using. You know, that's the scouring side. I guess this is not the green one. Those typical yellow green ones, but the blue one. But you know, I can't use this side. So you know, maybe it's a little bit nicer using the new one. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, now this is kind of setting up here, and it's drying a little bit on me. Okay, which is kind of good because as this starts to dry slightly and um, the pulp of the paper gets a little bit drier. It's it's accepting of more ink. You see, I can transfer that ink on there like that. You don't want it to dry too much though, but if it's slightly dry, maybe it's good because uh, you know, you can apply more ink. It's accepting and it's 
dye based inks work by staining the surface okay like that so it's hard to stain when it you know um, the ink is not transferring there so but on the other hand it makes it really easy to uh, to apply and blend in so it's kind of that balance in there you want it to be you know a little bit moist but maybe not so saturated that you know you're having a hard time applying it if you are I don't know maybe work on a couple of these at the same time and as one starts to set up a little bit then you have another one that you're applying it to and then you can go back to the other one you know I, you know I'm not talking about like a long time it could be just a matter of I don't know like a minute or two or something like that and these you know these I mean it depends on the relative humidity or whatever of your given air you know your area at that time that day or whatever um, as far as how fast they're setting up but um, uh, if you're in some very arid areas maybe not worrying about that at all oh okay so if it's really arid and you're in a really dry environment um, uh, you might be applying like this and it is just drying so fast um, that uh, you might have to go back in and add in some more of your lighter tone on top of it so what I, I do is I don't try to moisten it with the ink that I'm using okay but what you do is you can just go back to a lighter tone you know one of these or especially if you have a reinker you know here's a yellow reinker like that you can just do that and just do it right over the top it moistens it up again it gets the pulp of the paper a little bit moist and you're ready to go then then just go right back in with whatever uh, color that you were on and just start applying that like so okay so just keep it really easy for yourself and don't don't fight you know you want you want to kind of whenever you're doing your pieces you don't want to be fighting like some sort of um if at all possible um, media surface compatibility okay um just get it you know working uh to whatever your liking is and it's going to be different too you might be doing something during the summertime and uh the winter time you know that that media um is a lot different so i don't know yeah okay so uh let's see that is that let's go to black now huh okay uh oh here's a bottle green i happen to have a bottle green bottle green is really dark see that right there let's see see how much darker that bottle green is okay well genie it's raining where she is might you know her inks might be drying a little bit slower Deanna out in that desert terrain might be drying a lot faster uh is that snowing where anyone's at <laughs> or has it snowed anywhere anywhere in, you know, where anyone's at someone was from Australia here um, on a previous video recent video right I think so I, I think so I can't I can't remember who that was it's interesting doing these live streams they got Belgium Australia you know <laughs> Canada certainly okay so let's see I'm gonna try okay now here's what I'm doing too I'm going with this edge here now I you know I don't always do this but it occurs to me since I'm using the sponge we might as well use this um kind of for a little bit of technique so I'm going for this little bit of a streakier type of look like something like this look at it you can see kind of the marks I'm going for on this but see this movement like that see that you can get kind of that real flame like look like that okay now don't do that with like a super wet um sponge kind of do it with a drier one like that and then see what you do is you stay in that area you don't just do it like once okay you know you know that's not going to do anything so what you do is you just develop develop something like that and see that's that, that tapered look because i keep hitting it in that same spot and then i wipe it like that okay all right so that's the technique right there and this is getting really dry I'm not squeezing it down like that real hard I'm just kind of 
you know, I'm letting, I don't know, let gravity do the work for you. And then you can get that real kind of flame-like texture like that. You know, these little subtle things like that. I think those are really fun to do. And it, you leave some, kind of retain some areas up there. So like between like this part and like that next part, you know, just leave a space in there. Okay. Now I'm not thinking, okay, I want to, I got to keep that like a sixteenth of a millimeter. I'm not thinking of, you know, like that in my head or something like that. I'm just kind of going like this, okay? But just to say, you know, you don't do it. Just don't keep things so even, you know? Uh, don't be too uh, super careful about it in terms of your placement or something like that. And I think it looks, you know, I don't know. It looks more interesting, I think, as an end result, too. You get that kind of movement, right, in the uh, in that space there. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to see some rain here. Send some of that rain uh, to Southern California, Genie, if you're getting too much of it. I don't know, maybe you guys need the rain up there, too. Uh, hello, Froggy Fresh. Good to see you. Um... Here is some black now, okay? All right, so when you're in black, um, be careful about that. Uh, we want to keep, see how this is going from light to dark like that, okay? Try not to make this like a, just a solid bar of black, okay? Now I'll show you how you do that, it's really easy, okay? But sometimes people just go like this with the black and then they go like this and they're staying there in one spot and it just creates a solid line instead of a transition. So with the darker tones like this, like black, what you do is you just kind of put it on a little area like that, okay? And see, I'm staying there, okay? So you stay there for a while. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking like five minutes, I'm talking like, you know, 10 seconds or so. And then, see, by the time you do that a few times like that, now you're dealing with like a 5% version of black, right? Okay, so then you can kind of taper it over into the light like that, but you're not bringing in like a 50% version of black, you're doing, I don't know, I don't even know if that, that's like 2% black or something, right? Okay, so you just control your amount of ink that you're applying like that, see that? So, I don't know, that's about a quarter inch or so, uh, and then, you kind of bring it over like that. All right, so really utilize the dry version. Like so, and then that's it. But look at look at that glow. It's really starting to flame now, huh? Deanna, do like a, you can do like that, but uh, with your pastels on like a eight foot panel for like a, you know, a full, uh, I don't know, painting in your, it's like for a, um, like in a, like a living room or something like that, a, a big panel, panel piece, like a painting. Okay, so here we go on that side, like that. Okay, so four corners like that. I'm going to try to bring some into these areas like that to make uh, the separation between those two flames a little bit stronger. Uh, no, uh, Froggy, this is um, uh, glossy cardstock, so just a piece of your glossy cardstock like so, okay? Uh, the gold was applied with the use of yellow like that, so uh, dye-based yellow, okay? And you can still see a little bit of that white of the paper right there. Uh, let's see, that sponge, uh, is your sponge dry or damp or just new? It was new. Um, I hadn't used it before, before this piece right here, so it looks just like that. Now, I thought about it, it is so dry, okay? I thought, should I make this moist and just kind of wring out the uh, sponge first and then go on there uh, just because it is so dry? But if I did that, though, it would dilute all of the inks that I 
applied on here if I use that side because there'd be water mixing with those inks. And uh, I didn't want that. I wanted this to really be super vibrant, okay, in terms of that color. Uh, color glow. Okay, so here comes the black. So here's what I'm doing. I'm using this little tiny tip right here, okay, like this. And but see, you stay in that on that tip like that, and then it will build out kind of that look like that to that, all right? Okay, so you see what I mean? You just stay there. Now, I'm, I'm reiterating this because I know what happens when people, if people just do this for the first time, they go like this one time, it's like there's nothing appearing, okay? But it's, it's just, you kind of just stay there like that. <laughs> and then you get that nice transition like that. You see that? See what I mean? So you kind of hold your area. It might take 20, 20 swipes or something like that. All right, what did, what did Jason say? So if this was a brush, would you just be feathering on the black? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I would use a brush, though. That seems like it would take forever. I don't know, might work. Like something like this, you know, type of brush. Not with the white paint on it or something like that, but, you know, something like that. Uh, definitely, you can give it a try. Um, a lot of brushes... I mean, if they're synthetics, they're not going to be as absorbent as like something like a sponge. So I don't know. Give it a try. I knew someone that used paint brushes. Unless you're talking about kind of the color blending brushes or whatever, you know, the ones that people talk about or that they're using a lot these days, the makeup brushes. But if I want that kind of that edgy type of look, you know, um, you would go with something more that more has a, that has more of an edge. I noticed someone mentioned um, the stylus tools, um, you know, with those sponge edges like that. That edge thing is the thing that's giving it that, you know, kind of that, I don't know, what would you call it? That tapered kind of feathered look to it in there, you know, because we have all these edges like this that are creating it like that. I mean, not that, you know, not that that has to have that look to it, you know. It's one look uh, of, you know, many that can be created. You don't want to go for, you don't want to try to get some kind of look um, uh, that from some sort of applicator um, that's much more conducive to a different type of texture. You know what I mean? So... I don't know, maybe if I was going with like a like a paper towel, you know, and wiping it on like that, it's going to create a different type of look. So, you know, you're just kind of taking advantage of um, a certain type of texture that's very conducive to the applicator that you're utilizing for that uh, process. Okay, so see this right in here? I think I want to create a little bit of a stronger, in this case, light green glow. So let's go back in and reintroduce some of this or some more of this. It's all underneath here, okay? You can see it like right in here. I like that glow, so I'm, I want to add a little bit more of that, okay? I mean, it's not any big change right now because I'm putting this light green over this darker area, but I'm going to pull in a little bit more. And let's see if you can tell the difference here. I'll put some right here. Okay. And I don't know, can you see the difference right there and here? See this yellow right here? I think that looks pretty good, but let's go in a little bit with more with the light green. Hello in Alberta, Canada. Good to see ya. Let's see, is Alberta, are you guys 8.48 p.m. right now? Or is it 7.48? Okay, do you see that green starting to appear right there? See, in Alberta, Canada, maybe you can see uh, uh, the northern lights. We can't see it here in San Diego. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me, do you stamp scenes of places you've been? Um, maybe, you know, but it's more along the lines of where do you want to be right now? Or what would you, where would you like to be right now? So sometimes, you know, you in a hot, sweltering summer day, I'll stamp a cool, kind of icy um, scene, you know, to kind of emotionally 
or whatever mentally cool down or something like that and vice versa during you know colder months or something like that but see that glow there working that that so you can always put light on top of dark okay so these are the marvy inks that i'm using right now marvy inks just are the brightest inks out there on the market but i also use the distress inks and uh you know if my memento greens weren't at the bottom of my stack of memento pads i would use those right now too okay but anyways there you have it like that hello jen good to see you Thanks for joining in, uh, everyone, uh, to see this little demonstration right here. We're almost done with this, but um, let's see. Let's do, okay, now here's my dilemma. This is what I'm thinking about right here. I want to do some stars in the sky. Which way is the sky and which way is the land? Let's see. This way is a little bit darker up top here. I think this will be my surface down here, my lake down here. I know you have to decide. I mean, you can also go this way. It wouldn't really be Northern Lights this way. It'd be like a UFO invasion or something like that. But, <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, that's one of those things. Okay, so going back, my dilemma is if I s splatter paint some white up here to represent some stars, and I think I do want to do that, um, it does, this paint here creates a little bit of a, a raised texture, even though it's very uh, light or something like that, um, or thin, okay, but it is still a raised thing. I don't know, have you guys ever stamped something and there was a, you know, a piece of lint on your stamp, even a little fiber or something like that, then you stamp it out and you can see that fiber on there, or it creates a hole, you know, especially in kind of a... Uh, stamp with a lot of surface area like that. So, okay, so that being said, I'm going to splatter paint some in here and I'll stamp this over the top of it because if I stamp this first and I splatter paint this in, it's going to be in front of the image of the lake, right? So then we would just call it like snowfall or something like that. But let's keep it as the stars. I found my toothbrush. It was over at, on my other computer if you were watching that video from a couple days ago. All right, so I won't overdo it with this, um, with these star effects right here, because again, I don't want to create a huge amount of texture. Let's see, I'm going to wash this off, I think, after this video, so I'll just use this to clean off my my mixing tools, just my uh, stamp board, scratch board knife here. All right, so we're not going to do too much. I don't need too much of it here. So I'm not soaking this whole toothbrush. I'm putting in like, like a drop, like in the very tip here. Okay. Like so. Yeah. Uh, try it sometimes, sweetie. Um, I always find, I, <laughs> I always feel strange calling you that, but hey, that's your name there. Um, uh, use a lot of those lighter tones. And you notice, you know, when I got through the darker tones, um, I applied the lighter tone on top of it because I wanted to get a stronger glow. So all of these colors, again, inks are transparent. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's the foundation one. It, I find it easier to start off with a lighter foundation because you don't have to clean off, you know, your applicator in between um, applications if you work from light to dark, right? You can just keep using the same one. Okay, so here we go right here. Uh, about five inches of space distance between. My brush and the surface right here. What did you say, Jeannie? Let's see, I thought uh, you found your toothbrush in your bathroom. No, <laughs> of course this isn't a toothbrush that I use. Uh, to brush my teeth with. I don't know if I ever did. I always used an electric toothbrush. I think this was one of those freebies from like a dentist or something like that. Okay, I put some up here and look at that variation. I mean, you can you can do this like with a white paint pen or something like that. You can do, you know, you can add those in one at a time, but it's a little bit more, I don't know, kind of organic or uh, random, I guess, in terms of the patterning of the 
spray pattern if you do it um, you know in this type of method some people used to take um, as I've mentioned before I, I, I think they've taken um, a, like a correctional pen they just flicked it like that you know um, it must have been kind of a thicker kind of tipped pen or something like that but stuff like that you know is always kind of interesting to use and I wasn't always using the, the bleed proof white but um, I had a bottle of that from college you know sitting around for 20 years and I don't know, maybe I was going through my supplies and thought, oh, you know what, why don't we use that as, as opposed to, uh, you know, or not as opposed to, but maybe as an alternative to adding it all in each dot individually. But see that? One thing that's really fun about the, the, um, the bleed proof white is, you see that? I mean, that, those, that dot right there, I mean, that is so tiny right there. You can see it here. It's like the size of this tip right here right but look how opaque it is right i mean some of those would get very translucent and you might not be able to see it if it were a different type of paint that being said if you don't have something like this you're in an area that you can't get this stuff uh gesso acrylic paint something like that um what do i use to clean this off who wants to clean froggy you know i wear this uh ink like a like a badge of honor uh through the next uh, two weeks <laughs> no i use a pumice sponge do you know what those are it's not a pumice stone it's like one of those synthetic little sponges um i learned that from uh when i used to go around teaching at different uh, stores and i've mentioned in previous videos like at one point in time um it changed from like that borax style of a uh, kind of real, you know, gritty type of soap in store sink areas or bathrooms. Pretty soon everyone had that pumice sponge sitting around that sink and that worked really fantastic. All right, which way was up and which way was down again? I think I wanted to go that way. Every time I flip it around like that, now the top looks darker, but then when I flip it this way, now the bottom looks darker. What's going on here? Okay, I think that's the darker t area up top there. So let's make that area like that. I'm, and this one really doesn't matter. Okay, I'm not, I'm gonna stamp this, uh, um, where did this go? This is, okay, I'm not going to have this bottom part going off the page. So what I did was I didn't ink up this bottom part or what I do is I, I'll just remove some of this ink down here. Okay, like so. So that is going from wet to dry down here so it's going to stamp up from dark to light in other words i don't want to have a dark line like that kind of sitting right up here okay so you just transition it off this is what i teach in my first class um, stampscapes one i had people wiping off areas of their uh stamps mostly that cloud cumulus one but the, the lakeside cove too all right okay moment of truth right this is the really fun part unless you drop your stamp and <laughs> something like that or you know i'm demonstrating at a convention you're using those big plastic tables and you know they're kind of giving like that you know as you stamp on there and then you lift up the stamp and it didn't even stamp out it at all in the middle other than that this is the really fun okay so i'm standing up uh and i get my pressure you know left center right here Okay, and remember the page is a little bit moist, so I'm stamping this down like this and I'm allowing the ink to transfer over there because I want a really dark impression with this one because the background's really dark, right? So if you're stamping wet, you know, into moist, you know, the paper surface right here, um, it uh, needs to transfer over there, so allow it to do that. Oh, glad you got it, Jen. It is fantastic stuff. And, you know, if you use it like I do, like a bottle like that, I, I don't know how long it... I, I mean, I use it quite... I started using it a lot more with the vellum pieces, with the vellum blockouts. But um, there we go. Uh, a bottle like this, though, I mean, it can last like 15 years or something like that. And it's just such a dynamic... Um, use of that stuff i mean that white not only it's it's stars but it's 
texture, contrast, lighting, uh, you know, it's doing all that type of stuff. So these areas right in here in the corners aren't very interesting, but you put some of those little stars in there like that, and it is really fun uh, to do. Okay, so uh, Cindy, uh, no problem. Good to see you there. Better late than never. <laughs> oh, yeah, bleach is a great way to do that too. Yeah, uh, pool chlorine, come on, froggy, don't do that. Yeah, get a little pumice sponge, you know. You can probably get it at any type of little store, you know, Target or something like that. They would all have it, or you can buy one online. I don't know what they call them, though. I, I, I looked online, you know, to see if it was called pumice sponge, and then I came up with a bunch of pumice um, stone things or whatnot, but I, I, I don't know. I, I think they might still come up. I don't know if they sell them individually, if they're looking in a little pack. Okay, now I have this little area on the sides here. I could fill it in with, you know, a little bit of an extra impression here and an impression there overlapping it a little bit. But I'm just going to separate um, surface from sky a little bit with a little bit more tone like this, okay? All right. Now, see, I'm not doing it real fast again. I'm just kind of, you know, tapping around. This is what it looks like right there, okay? But see this? I'm coming into the shadow area of the image just a little bit, okay? I'm doing. I'm not doing it with black. I'm doing it with more. I'm doing it with black ink, but that's like a, what, a like a 4% gray? It's like 1% gray if you just tap it out once, right? So just keep doing this, but don't just keep doing that. Look and see what you're doing, you know, every now and then. Now, see, I can barely see anything happening at all. So I know it's really being applied very slowly like that. But see, when you do that like that, when you anchor it down, <clears throat> it kind of anchors the image into the scene a little bit more. I don't need to do a lot of anchoring right here because the scene is really quite dark and I'm just putting kind of a darker shadow on top of a dark area anyway. But, I, you know, I think it reads pretty well like that. It kind of... I don't know, it sets those images in a little bit more, okay? Like so. All right, I haven't used these um, sponges like this in a while, but I don't know, I got used to it pretty fast here. I want to use, I've always, I don't know, not all, I haven't always wanted to use, but... <clears throat> Over this last year, it's really been important to me to utilize materials that are readily available to anywhere, anyone, anywhere in the world. You know what I mean? Stylus tools were the best for me um, that have really ever been. It was, you know, a tool that was very, very comfortable in the hand. You had very absorbent um, sponges. Um, and if you took care of those sponges and you didn't scrub with them they last they could last years and years and years okay i was using some of those tips for 15 years and i use them a lot okay but you know someone's in or you know any area like even alberta okay you know i, I didn't know if a clear snap had uh, like a distributor there where you can get those tips those refills if they're readily available Certainly Australia, Europe, whatever. You used to see those stylus tools a lot early on. Like everyone had a set, but a lot of people didn't use them. So, you know, it was kind of a forgotten tool because people weren't used stamping shapes with it. But anyways, going around, kind of framing this off even more. The darker you take certain areas, okay, the lighter the lights are going to seem by contrast there. So we have a pretty dark um, perimeter in terms of kind of creating a vignette. But now we have that illuminated area. So if you go one step darker here, by contrast, that makes those areas seem one step lighter. So it really pops out that light right there. Okay, now you don't always have to keep, you know, retain the, uh, the white of the paper like that in there, although it's a really narrow, faint version of it. I mean, you can go in here, it, you know, the lightest part could be this color or something like that, okay? I just did that. That's kind of, re you know, kind of retaining, um, the most amount of contrast in here going from something that's white to basically black right there. It's like a full value scale. But, you know, if you go 
too dark somewhere. Let's say, oh my God, I, I lost all my white like this, okay? And you're, you know, from all that application of tone, just go darker on the sides. And let's say this color right here was not white, but it's this color, okay? So what would make this color lighter is just by making areas around it darker. So you're just, again, you're playing with contrast. Like, see, it would look like down here, there's none of that white, like up there. But, you know, I mean, that looks fine, like that. Or if it even got only to that one, so let's say medium tones to dark. No big deal, right? Okay, so... Uh, yeah, we can get those materials anywhere, Genie. Um, ra a rag would be perfect. I, I think like an old t-shirt would be probably the ideal thing to use. Cotton t-shirt, you know, something absorbent, not a synthetic, like a poly. Uh, polyester or something like that, capoline. But I thought that, you know, that type of fabric, it would be really soft and whatnot. And, uh... You know, I think it would work out great. I don't know, I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay, so speaking of cleaning, um, I need some of that pool cleaner here, uh, frog, froggy. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna do that, but let's see if I can get this mounted onto this piece of paper here. I cut, uh, I pre-trimmed um, a mat out for this. I think that, okay, I, yeah, let me look at my impression here. I'm just looking at, my, looking at my black impression just to make sure that there's no, like, wet beads of ink, or a large wet bead of ink on there, okay, where I can do this and mount it up, okay. And I think it's fine. These are dye-based inks, so I didn't use, like, a, like, a, like, a VersaFine Clair or something like that. Um, to stamp out my main image. Okay, so on the glossy... I mean, it might be interesting to, to emboss this type of image on the front, right? It would be raised from the background. You notice I didn't use any um, foreground in this. I mean, I could, but... You know, this scene kind of is about... It's about the, the imagery is kind of enhancing kind of what we did in the background, all right? So this scene is really about ink, you know, and color. Okay, oops. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to leave it like that so we can see a lot of that. It's sponge work, but it's kind of like brush work, you know? Okay, let me see if I can get this position straight. I always get my head in everyone's view in the camera here, but... So if I do that, forgive me. All right, let's see. Okay, go like that. And, I don't know, that's like a you know, sixteenth of an inch border. Maybe, I don't know, maybe in between sixteenth of an inch and an eighth. I, I made it a little bit wider. I have that, like, thin border um, going on in a lot of my scenes to kind of bring out the white of the um, little embellishments in there. In fact, I'm going to embellish a little bit more. Here's a folded card. This is a piece of glossy um, blue. You would use a black because you can't find this one anymore. But uh, I bought this like 30 years ago, like on clearance. <laughs> uh, because it didn't sell, so, you know, I don't know. I had 200 sheets to do something with. Okay, so anyway, I'm not getting this on the edge very good here, but like that, all right. Small pointed cardstock to hold my scenes while working. Oh, got it. It's a good idea. Okay. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if this quote stamp underneath here looks okay, just stamped in white. And if it doesn't, it's not going to dry so fast, I'm gonna be able to wipe it off. I'm just gonna cut off this bottom. <laughs> uh, 
I guess I can use the stays on pigment. I don't know. I haven't used that one a lot, so I'm not too familiar with that. I'm just going to use the brilliance, okay? Because the brilliance will dry on glossy cardstock. And I'm, I'm going to spray seal this whole thing, too. All right. Now, ideally, what you do is you spray seal this before you mount it up and everything because you're going to be spray sealing the whole thing but since this is glossy too and that little white border is not glossy but it's not going to matter if I get some of that um, ink on there but for the sake of this video here you know doing something like that um, you know I'm just going to be spray sealing after the fact and you know I mean this th uh, this is a water-based brilliant sinks are water-based so um, spray sealing doesn't kind of put them back into solution and get them to run like some types of oil-based pigment inks would do, okay? Especially if they're not dried, okay? Or Okay, if you're, if you're using an oil on here too, uh, you'd really have to emboss it, okay? So, you know, do whatever. But on this one right here, um, I am going to see if i like it actually i'm going to do a test impression here first okay okay I, i'm seeing what blue or what um that's all blurred out but i'm seeing what uh value of white that will look like this is white pigment ink and is it's reasonably close to opaque but not you know, not quite, but it's close enough um, to uh, being light enough. I don't want it like really light uh, or really dark on here. So let's see. Let's see if I can get it reasonably straight here and centered. So let's see how this goes. Hold your breath. <laughs> I'm joking. It, if this, like I said, if this doesn't stamp out, if it's like, oh my gosh, I, I stamped out like half the quote, you know, you just wipe it off with a paper towel and just do it again. Or if I don't like it at all. Okay. See that right down there? That's all smeared out right there. Let's try this again. I did that on purpose as a demonstration. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, let's see if I can get that out, out of there. Okay, like that. Smudgy. Let's see. I re... No, I didn't re-ink. That was a brand... That's a, real, a pretty new um, white pad there. Where's my, where's my stamp positioner when I need it? I don't, I'm just joking. I don't even have one. Okay, so let me get a better impression here. I hope it's not a third time's the charm type of thing, because I don't want to do this again after this one. All right. So that text down there. Watch out, of course, with small text or any kind of detailed things with any type of um, pigment ink, because it's, you know, it's almost like using paint. Okay. I am going to bring this closer in here to myself. I'm trying to hold this out like at arm's distance, you know, for this video here, but let's see. Okay. Sorry if my head's in the way. And let's go a little bit higher up this time. All right. Okay, can we see it right there? Okay. The room got quiet all of a sudden. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. I'm going to zoom out so you can't see, you know, how kind of crooked it is, but it's a little bit crooked, but uh, by like a half a millimeter. <laughs> I don't know. I think it looks pretty good there. See, I, I, this is, you know, a full piece of uh, the glossy, and I thought, well... You know, I was going to trim this right here, but I thought, eh, let's see if it, you know, looks pretty good, uh, you know, with a quote stamp. Because if you don't like the quote stamp, right, you can always cut it off. But if you, you know, kind of cut this off, then, you know, you don't leave yourself the option for the quote stamp afterwards. You know, it would be kind of interesting to do is to send someone a card like this, but then you also do, 
you know, a real slim line one like this that you have inside here like that, or, you know, make it smaller so that they'd have like a bookmark to use of that same type of thing. And to do a scene like this, I'm not talking about on this paper right here, but if you did it on white, you know, doing something like all that on here, I mean, it's not gonna take very long, you know, and you would just do this, you know, one small section of the, uh, you know, the cove right in there. So it'd be kind of cool as like a, little accessory to that right there. Okay, I need to be careful that I don't smear out that uh, that uh, quote stamp right there. Okay, so here's the final touch on this one, okay? Um, I could heat set this down here. I don't want to heat set it. I want this one to air dry. I guess the final touch would be spray sealing, but um, let's hit this with um, some additional stars, okay? So we have all those little splatter painted stars in there right but let's do something that's going to match you know the text weight a little bit more with this paint pen okay okay what it, say uh i almost got rid of my stamp positioner i use it now more than ever good thing you kept it then uh the white brilliance today good froggy after i get it i need to learn how to use it well remember it's just a uh, it's like a regular white pigment, you know, unless you haven't used white pigment ink before. But the white brilliance ink, though, you can use it just like any other type of pigment ink, okay? But what you can also do is you can use it on non-porous surfaces, glossy cardstock, foils, um, vellum, okay? Um, it will dry on all those surfaces. It'll air dry, but it will also heat set almost instantly. Uh, you had your printer cut 500 pages for you. Um, of what size paper, Genie? Uh, oh, did you get a, uh, let's see. Cindy, are you mentioning the positioner? You got a bigger positioner or something like that? Thank you, Beverly. Thanks, Jeannie. Jeannie said perfect. Not really, but I'm fine with it. <laughs> it could have been stamped up a little bit higher. You know, it's good to have a little bit of a larger space underneath it. I don't care about things like that. Well, I, you know, I, I, I have a preference, but if it, you know, it comes out how it comes out. Uh, the pens that I'm using are, uh, Heather, is that one for me? Um, I am, uh, in terms of the white uh, acrylic pen set, it's the, okay, now I, I was using these other ones called the Meows and White Paint Set, but I've been using my, my set here for a while. I think all these paint pens, if that's the pens you're um, asking about, I think they're all coming out of the same factory and they're just under different brand names. So they're either purchased by different companies and branded differently, or it's one company that just turns out, you know, turns out, um, I don't know, pens that they're naming under a different brand, to, you know, to corner more of the market share on them, okay? Because I look at the, the barrel, the tip, and the, uh, um, you know, the tip in this area right here, I forget what that's called. Um, and it they're all the same mold, okay? I mean, the labels are all different. You know, the barrels might be different. This one's translucent, so you can see the paint inside. Some of them are, you know, solid, opaque. Okay, but I'm adding in those little stars. See those little extra stars? So they're larger, right? But then you see that splatter painting star in the background. Uh, some of my splatter painted stars kind of wiped off when I was doing all that braring over the top of it. Like I said, it's better if you kind of spray seal before, but you know, to get a little bit of variation, it almost looks like Orion right there, the belt. As I've mentioned in previous videos, you know, if you want to go for something really artistic and subtle, you know, when you're giving like a card to someone, uh, Beatrice doing some graduation cards if she's doing a nighttime scene you know if you want to you know you can do little things that are kind of a little more things for yourself but you know uh, you can put like 
someone's, you know, whoever's graduating, you can put their kind of their, um, their uh, constellation up in the sky. They would never realize it was there unless they were like astronomy major. Um, but it's one of those little things you can tell them after you, you might, you know, you can tell them, Hey, you know, I put your, you know, I put, uh, you know, Taurus up there in your sky or something like that. It's kind of interesting to do those little types of things. I have, you know, I do those little things once in a while, you know, I'll bring up on my computer, um, I don't know, whatever constellation and whatnot, and I'll add a constellation up there. You know, Orion's a cool one, or something like uh, Cassiopeia, something like that, that W, you know, Little Dipper, Big Dipper. All right, so that is that. Um, uh, Froggy's printer needs an exorcism every time she changes the ink uh, cartridge, or he, it most certainly doesn't cut paper. Huh. Uh, I, I think they meant their printer, like their professional printer that they use um, there, not uh, their home printer. Um, yeah. Uh, and then hope they are a Taurus. <laughs> right. All right. So love must be as much a light as it is a flame. Isn't this kind of cool, though? Because that I, I love that quote there for this purpose, because this is a light. It's like northern lights, right? But then you kind of do it in that flame type of uh, uh, format, so it kind of looks like a flame. And you can do this in all kinds of different color schemes, too. You can do it in purples or whatever. You can try to stay kind of true to, you know, actual northern light color schemes or something like that, or you can just kind of go off on your own. And, you know, you have someone that their favorite color is, uh, you know, purple or something, or blue. Then do the same type of effect in those types of colors like that so uh yeah that's what's really fun about it and then you can like i said you can do a little personalized thing um i did a, a scene for some someone's uh, uh daughter once okay or something like that and i think what i did i think i put her initial uh hannah yeah I put like an H <laughs> in star format. Not so literal where it's like so obvious, but the dominant stars were kind of in an H format. Um, you, you can do little things like that. That's what's really fun about uh, doing skies. Oh, should I do? I think I've done this a million times, but. Oh, where is a stamp? Let's see here. Here it is. Okay, it's always the last thing I'm looking for. Now, this would be an exact copy of what I've done before, okay, in terms of the imagery. Please do not let me drop this stamp onto the scene at this point in time in the construction of it. I'm joking, uh, but still. <laughs> All right, let's stamp this little guy out down here. Okay, let's put it about like so. Light, even pressure. Okay, this is a very small stamp. So don't put the same amount of pressure that we use to stamp out the Lakeside Cove large there, okay? All right, so I don't know. It kind of uh, makes for uh, kind of a, an, an addition, additional focal point of the scene like that, right? Um, I don't know, we have really there's really three kind of focal points in this scene as I see it, okay, or this card. You got the lights, and people tend to look at, like, living things, okay? Um, I think that this is one of those instances where I think that um, a character, an animal, a bird, or a person is kind of secondary to the, um, the background um, texturing that's going on. And then, of course, people always read something that's um, kind of in a piece, so... I don't know, there's like three kind of landing spots, but I think, you know, in terms of a kind of the visual, you know, when you give a card to someone, there's um, a visual path that people take in looking at th certain things in order of, you know, kind of dominance or whatnot, you know, so they'll focus in on kind of the thing that they land on. So I think it's like this, 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 and then they go back to like right here. Uh, that's what I do. Um, that's what I'm, you know, seeing right here. You might have a kind of a different 
kind of path or whatnot. But um, I don't know. There's little different types of things to consider like that. Okay, so yeah, and does anyone have any questions or whatnot? Uh, Ranger has a pumice sponge that they sell called the Craft Scrubby. Oh, maybe that's what people used. I don't know. I think I got ours at like a Target or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, don't get anyone uh, the sponge that has too large of pores. You know what I mean? It's really kind of um, it's kind of dense and. Uh, so, but it's kind of softer than the pumice sponge, but I don't know. I've been using it for years, and I sometimes I use it like several times a day. And it looks like it hasn't even been touched, so I don't know. It's it's really great for that. Uh, silk paper. Uh, oh, candy. I have the link for some silk. You know, if you're looking for the Mohawk white-coated silk, it's right in the information section of the website under um, the off-site materials links, I think. Um, it's in there. Um, and remember, um, if you're looking for like that silk paper, it's just called a, um, a semi-gloss paper. And there's a lot of different types of them. I didn't test mine out or something like that. I just looked at it in the store and I thought, you know, I think that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not using the silk here. This is the glossy. But this is the silk right here. And, I, you know, over the years, I in the past, I've bought... Um, the Appleton paper ones out of Wisconsin, and it was uh, called Dull, and it worked really fantastic. So I haven't met, you know, kind of met a dull satin, silk, you know, semi-gloss paper that I didn't like. Um, you know, as long as it's cardstock and whatnot. I've gotten some feedback from some of the packs, some of the clearance packs that I picked up and sold for people. I picked up a bunch of them at Kelly Paper, but they were the 80 pounds. So one guy liked it so much that he um, he said he's going to buy uh, uh, the, the thicker pack. But I'm thinking, well, you have 250 sheets of the 80 pound right now that you're, you know, <laughs> that's going to last you a lifetime. So I don't know if he's going to actually get that or not, unless he's like churning out like tons of uh, pieces or something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's see some of these. If you just joined in, I'll show you some of the inks that we went through here um, in terms of the colors. Where? Oh, okay, here we go. Here's some of these colors right here that we utilized. Um, but just a range of green tones, okay? Let me get this glare off this. Do it like this. Now there's glare on the other side. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um... But these are the tones right here. And if you just joined in kind of later on the, the process right here where I've already gone through that, um, you know, you're just doing a range of tones and you're working it from light to dark. And then as you work into the darker tones, you're retaining some of these lighter areas. In other words, by the time you get to this color, don't fill it all in with that same color. You know, you're kind of utilizing it on the uh, the perimeter like that. And you can always re, you know, replay this uh, video if you want to see um, exactly what we... Let me see if I can change the... Uh, here, I'm going to change my uh, exposure a little bit. That looks a little bit better. That's a little bit more true to what I'm looking at live here. I start off with the exposure much lighter when I'm doing these videos because the paper is all white at that time, okay? So that's what it looks like right here. Um, I think, Jen, I think I told her mom that, uh, yeah, that H is going to be up there. I, I can't, I'm try, can't remember the name of that piece. It was a, it was a foil one, though, a foil reflection, um, card, a foil card, I call it. Or do I call it a foil reflection card? I couldn't remember. <laughs> I move on when I stop, you know, doing these types of formats here. Uh, Creature of the Black Lagoon. I have a Creature of the Black Lagoon uh, rose. When I used it in a scene similar to this color scheme too, um, it's like everyone went out looking for that Ken Brown uh, Creature of the Black Lagoon stamp. Not everyone, but there was like three or four people and it was... Uh, um, long since discontinued. It was long since discontinued when I bought it, so I don't know where I got it. Uh, I think I got it at uh, Viva Las Vegas Stamps in his like gigantic, you know, open bin on the uh, 
uh, on the uh, store floor, and I think it was stamps he was selling on consignment from someone that was selling their like 5,000 stamp, um, you know, collection. This is like 20 years ago almost. Uh, where do you get that boat stamp? That stamp right there is uh, Solo Canoeist 159A. And by the way, these are, these are Stampscape stamps right here. Um, Cecile, glad, uh, glad you enjoy watching the live and whatnot. I enjoy, do I always enjoy doing this scene right here or this whole kind of Northern Lights type of thing. Uh, speaking of Northern Lights, and if you're doing this type of scene, I mean, you could stamp out your imagery first. Let's say you do it in a stays on black or something like that. You could bring in these colors right over the top of it in the dye based inks, but I usually like doing the um, inks first in the background um, just because I don't have to worry about smearing um, imagery or even if the image is smear, uh, you know, really set uh, in either a dye based ink um, or a something like solvent ink that's not going to mix with the water-based ink supplied over the top of it. You know, we're doing so much wiping like that. I mean, it could, you could dull the image, you know, by kind of wiping on it, you know, over the course of this whole background. I don't know what, we, you know, that would have been like 300 times or something like that. You know what I mean? So I usually um, retain the, uh, I don't know, the stamping process of this type of scene for the end because it's a nice dark impression nothing's applied over the top of it you know a little bit of ink over the top of it on the corners like that but it'll give you the strongest um, impression and uh, you know and thus the darkest one um, when you do it like that so I don't know keep that in consideration and you know the darker your um, background that you're doing this goes for anything not just northern lights it's like see if you're braring a, a scene in the background you know a background you stamp right over the top of it the darker you go i would go for the more strong kind of bolder types of images that are more silhouette based as opposed to let's say i, I stamped a cabin out on this okay where the rooftop's nice and light well all that you know imagery in the background is going to be showing right through the rooftop of the cabin, if you know what I mean, you know, because the, the cabin would be open. In other words, open designs like, like this sedge filter stamp, right? If I stamped it down here, you'd see all that texture showing right through all that area in there. So you go for a little bit more of a silhouette, you know, based. The rocks, yeah, they're open, but you know what I mean? You don't see like imagery showing through it because it's just it's just a small open area so just in general things like that solid trees in the foreground etc you know tend to work a little bit better for that and plus if you're trying to make the most amount of kind of bold impact and contrast against the background kind of bolder imagery i think um kind of brings out all of your results that you've created through that um layering of uh inks um even better you know it really um, contrasts against them or enhances them like that. Okay. So anyways, uh, hello, paper genius. Good to see you again. Um, I'll go get some of this junk and try it. I would recommend doing so froggy. See if you like it, enjoy the process and, uh, yeah. Have fun with it. Drop me a note if you have any comments or questions or if you run any uh, types of, uh, you know, hurdles or anything like that in the process. But um, the biggest thing is, is getting a solid foundation of those lighter tones, okay? It's not just coloring with ink, okay, when you're doing this type of thing. It's kind of saturating the page, the surface of the page, and the pulp of the page a little bit. You want to get that kind of slick and uh, a little bit moist. So that when you're going on with those darker tones, medium tones and darker tones, they're really kind of gliding on there because you're almost like puddling up that ink on there and just spreading it around like that. And, you know, like I said in this video, if it starts to dry out and it kind of becomes kind of a clunkier process, then go back in there and add in some of the words lighter tones again and re-moisten the page and do it with uh, inks, you know, your lighter tones of inks. 
What makes it really fast is if you just use some reinker fluid or something like that, some light reinker fluid with a color out of that color scheme. So on something like this, it could be a yellow, green, beige, or something like that. So we don't see that brown in there too much, but do you guys see that brown in there a little bit? Like it's in a little bit of those kind of feathery areas right here. Here's a little bit of that brown, and that's this one right here, okay? I mean, it would look fine without it, but I think it kind of enhanced it a little bit you know, with a little bit of a hint of that tone within that space. Here's a little bit of it right in here, but it's a very dry application of it. Hello, Sherry. Good to see you again. Uh, did I totally miss the live? Uh, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> you didn't miss anything interesting. Uh, just, you know, the scene right here and watching me kind of mess up on this... Uh, a quote stamp down there and have to re-stamp it again, as I had explained that you can do, but was hoping I wouldn't have to do, but ended up having to do it anyway. So, all right. So anyways, that is the card right there. Um, it's a pretty fast process. You know, I mean, there's not a lot of composition going on in this card right here, but you can do these types of things, do it on a, like a snowy terrain or something like that, or, you know, that would be kind of interesting. I do it in kind of wintry types of looks. Uh, where you stamp out the imagery too, and then you can splatter paint over the imagery to make it look like snowfall, but it's also can be stars in the sky and whatnot. Something like this might be interesting with a kind like of north, you know, a north star type of thing with a five point star. I don't think I'm gonna do it here, but um, but you can do things like that for like a little bit of a subtle um, focal point as well. So yeah. All right. So uh, thanks. As always, for joining in, always good to see all of you. And uh, yeah, uh, Northern Light, fun. Try it in different types of color schemes. Mix your color schemes, D mix some things that you might not think, you know, might go well in that type of thing by like throwing in something like that, you know, into the mix. Um, any any types of the... Uh, the um, distressings would be fantastic for that too because they're all kind of duller and lighter in value but they can make a great layer potentially with something like this you know and uh, could be a lot of fun but add it in little corners in the darker areas see if you like it and if you like it then add more but maybe do it in a very subtle way with a very dry application of it so really expand and make use of the full range of potential with any type of ink or medium that you have you can apply you know the full saturation of it like that you know really dark and uh, saturated but then you know you can use um, a much drier version of it so you can get this full range you know of values out of anything that you have and I think that really gives you you know we get a lot more money's worth out of um, any colors we have um, yeah all right, so signing off. Thanks again for joining in. Always good to see all of you and have a chat. Uh, always, uh, always fun stamping with people. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, Rose. Uh, let's see here. Oops, I lost my connection with my mouse. Here we go. Thanks everyone for checking out the, the live all right have a good rest of night i think everyone was it's night right for everyone i don't think anyone was from europe here belgium or something like that you know all right have a good one <laughs>